All right, students, parents, welcome back for uh, day three. So today we have SPAR review, uh, pages 46 through 49, and then completing the crazy food web. Uh, I took the liberty to go ahead and complete some of this because it was a lot of legwork up front. Um, and just to kind of show you some of this, the, the characteristics of a double bar graph, I had to create an extra section for this um, because we had four of our deli shops here. Um, but we only have three sections. So I created a fourth and then I took each section and split it in half. Okay, so that gives us a total of uh, two, four, six, eight total sections, but two of them are gonna belong to Kelly's, two of them to Alexandra's, two of them to Express, and then two of them to uh, Sandwich City. All right, <clears throat> so getting started with this, um, students, you do need to remember C dry mix. Um, and that will help kind of push you through this uh, C-Dry mix. I wrote it out. All right. So C-Dry mix is our constant, our dependent, which is our result, our y-axis, our uh, independent variable, which we manipulate or we change, and then our x-axis. Um, and this just kind of helps you set up graphs, look at graphs, uh, figure out which one is your independent and dependent variable, um, and go from there. So C dry mix will help, um, help you get through some of this stuff. So I took my X axis, remember X is flat, and then I labeled it with the different sub shops, but I also labeled the B and the E, one for the, um, roast beef sandwich and the egg salad sandwich, okay? I took the y-axis and I labeled it with a proper interval. It took me a second because if you count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, it doesn't make sense. If you go by 20s, it goes 20, 40, 60, 80. We don't have any that are 80s. Um, so it's really hard to get an accurate depiction. So I went by 15s and that gave us 15, 30, 45, 60. And that was perfect for us on this side. Don't forget to label your y-axis. And then as you start going, it does help to color. I got confused going halfway through this. Um, so I started coloring it and it kind of helped keep everything in line. So the reason we would do a double bar graph um, would be something that we could compare separate items at separate places. Um, so for instance, this one does sandwiches. We can compare the beef sandwiches for each place but we can also compare the egg sandwiches for each place. Um, not often are we gonna use a double bar graph, but it is handy to know how to do um, and pretty self-explanatory as you go. So the bottom one is yours to do. Okay, and so when you're doing this, um, it gives you three. So it gives you the daffodil, the tulip, and the uh, hyacinth, hyacinth? And as you do those, you'll have, this can be your hyacinth, this can be your tulip, daffodil, make sure you split it in half, and then go from there, because you're only working with two different shop prices. So Kevin's Flower Prices and Hillside Nursery. Um, and then once you go through those, that'll be your graph. Make sure you label at the bottom and on the sides here, and you'll be good to go for that one. All right, looking at our line graph that's up next. Um, I use this to show C dry mix, constant dependent results, Y axis, uh, the manipulate or change independent and X axis. Um, and so looking at this, it's not too hard. Um, you have a couple questions on your line graph. As you go from there, uh, five, it asks, what is the independent variable? Remember independent is our X axis, X goes flat. So it's this one right down here. And then the number six asks for what's the dependent variable and dependent y to the sky. So it goes up and down. So it would be this right there. All right, talk for the hard part. It is asking you to create a line graph um, for three different types of paper. Um, I would have liked to see this as a bar graph, but we can still pull it off, okay? So I started with our basic graph shape here. Remember, we need to label our y-axis, which is our uh, dependent. It's what we are measuring. It's our results. So 
Um, we are looking for a result. We are measuring the seconds. Okay. And then um, our x-axis is what we are changing or what we're manipulating. That would be our paper. Okay, so create a section for each one. I'm going to just label this W because that's our wax. I'm going to label this one S for sand. I'm going to label this one R for regular. We need to find a good interval to go up by. I would imagine we could probably fit five along this. So we can just go up by one. So label zero first. Make a line. This would be one. Make sure it's kind of even going up. Two. Three. Four and five. And so what you'll do for this is you're just gonna start where the wax paper starts. So the wax paper had a time of three seconds. So that means we're gonna start, um, we'll go from zero to three, make sure they line up. And then for our sandpaper, it had a time of five. So then we go from here and we kind of make sure that we meet our five and our sand that looks good there and then the regular paper had a time of four seconds and we kind of want to make them meet right there as well all right so now that you've got that that would be your line graph um, again if you turn this into a bar graph i think it would look better i think it would show the data a little better but it's there it's charted on the sheet all right um, make sure you answer those questions. I won't answer those for you. You can do that. That would be super easy to do. All right. Um, this graph is super hard to see. Um, I can kind of help you out here. This is your math. The only question on this page is asking what score did uh, a tool receive in math and what score did it receive in science. So that one's your math and that one's your science. So if you can make this out, great. If you wanna kind of give it a best shot here, like I think math is 50 and this one's 35, um, that would be great and go from there. Not too worried about that one. That one did not turn out the way it looked on the computer. All right, of course, book pages. Um, yes, most of us have already gone through these. It is review. Um, so as you go through them, make sure you are answering the questions. Take a couple notes. Maybe you learned something new. Okay. Here is your activity page. Okay. So the activity page has a top part. Um, remember our first level consumers. I'm going to actually fold this so I can get all of this in here. Our first level consumers are what eat the producers. Okay. Second level consumers are what eat the first level consumers. And then third level consumers are what eat the secondary consumers. There is a reason it's in a triangle. Students, you should know that part. Um, and then answer your questions going through here. And that should be about it. Um, as you go up, I think it said this in earlier pages. You'll need it though. Um, as you go up the food pyramid, you will want to make sure that you underline this piece and take that piece of information with you. Because um, remember that is how you get answers for your food pyramid here. So now that you've got those, let's move on to the last little bits here. And this is our crazy food web. Um, I don't think I'll be able to fit all of this in. So, forgive me, I'll do what I can here. But, oh, there we go. We got it all in. Okay. Um, make sure you put your name on it. Color code each organism with the following key. Producers are green. Remember, producers are what are fed by the sun. Okay. So, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'll do one producer, one one herbivore, one omnivore, and one carnivore, okay? So our vacuolary is a producer. I'm hurrying up here, students, so don't go outside the lines. You have time. All right, our 
herbivores are pink, so let me put up pink here. Herbivores eat only plants. Okay, so it looks like the yo-yo bug, the only thing that it eats is the vacuolary. So it would be an herbivore. Okay, an omnivore is blue. An omnivore eats both. So we want to find something that eats both uh, plants and uh, herbivores. So it'll be a consumer for animals and a consumer for plants. So it looks like the cattle lily. Kind of sounds like a flower, but it's an animal in this one. So it looks so it looks like cattle lily eats uh, producers and consumers. So it counts as an omnivore. Uh, and then the carnivore is yellow, and the carnivore is something that eats only um, consumers. Okay, so this one wouldn't work because it does, that's a plant, and it eats the plant, so it wouldn't work there. Um, it looks like our froggy poo. Digging the names here. Looks like our froggy poo is our carnivore. All right, um, make sure you describe how you were able to tell. I kind of elaborated to that in the video a little bit, so make sure you know. And then which organism is at the top of the food web and how are you able to tell, okay? The last page you have going on here is imagine you're on the newest reality show, Survivor in Space. The host of the show has given you a table explaining where each organism gets its energy from. From the table, create a food web to share with your new castaways. Then use the box to color code the new organisms just as you did on the front. Hint, the ones that don't eat anything get their energy from the sun. So it'll go through all of that with you and then you'll create that good little uh, exercise for you to do today. All right, students, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, parents, if you are getting this on Remind, um, make sure you're at least sharing it with your students if you can. Uh, send them the link, send them the video, show it to them on your phone, whatever it may be. Um, it'll offer some good help for them today. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Bye.